Hi guys, Jamie here from JB Motion. Today we're going to be creating this cool video that you're looking at right now. So we're going to have some background music which we're going to add into our Cinema 4D scene. You're going to be able to download that music from the description below. And also you're going to be able to download the Mixamo character just in case you guys don't have access to Mixamo. So let's get started on this. Here we go. Another person left a suicide the note Couldn't find enough a lover hope Okay guys, so the first thing we want to do is find a suitable dance routine for our uh, song. So let's just open it up so we can um, hear it as we're searching. Jump into Mixamo. I'm gonna include these characters, whatever ones I choose in the description below, just in case you guys don't have access to Mixamo. And I've already found one that looks really well. Uh, Samba, Samba dancing. So as you can see, he's not dancing to the beat. So I played around with this and 56 is a good overdrive to set this on. I love this song. So you can see he's dancing to the beat now which is great so we can download him and that's gonna download away. Okay, so that's finished downloading. I'm just going to grab that out of my downloads and I'm going to put it into this folder here. Okay, so let's jump into Cinema 4D. I can actually stop playing this music now. And remember, you can find this music in the description below also. So Let's bring in our character. So this is him here, Samba Dancing 1. And just click OK on that. And hit No. So let's increase the frame range here all the way up to 499. That's the length of his dance. And let's hit Play. So he's going to dance away there, so that's pretty good. Let's get some music here in the background. Now to do that, what we're going to do is create a null. And on this null, we're just going to set a random keyframe. So I'm just going to set one here in the X coordinate. And now if I press Shift F3 on my keyboard, uh, I can click on this null and go to frame, go to view go to create and go to add special tracks sound now if you go over here to this uh, sound panel and you can you'll, you'll be able to um, load in your music so my music is actually on my desktop in new song and this is the song here that I want to load in cool so now if I hit play you're going to see that we're getting our music playing in our Cinema 4D scene and our guys dancing around the place, so that's perfect. Okay, so next we want to set the scene. So we're going to create a floor first of all. Uh, we're going to use a plane for that. Let's call this floor. And let's increase the width by dragging on this little orange circle here. We can go nice and far to about 2217 centimeters. And let's increase the depth on that along the Z axis to about 668 or 670 around that uh, depth on the Z axis. And then we want to create a backdrop. So create another plane. We can actually duplicate our floor, hold down control and drag, and then we can just bring that up above our floor, because that's where a, a backdrop should be. I'm just going to call this backdrop, and I'm going to hit R on my keyboard and rotate this 
90 degrees. I can hold down shift to lock that to increments of 10. So minus 90 degrees on that. And I'm going to hit E on my keyboard, bring this back here and up a little bit to about there. Okay. So now we're going to create our backdrop. So let's check the size of this backdrop. So it is 277. I'm just going to round this off. And what do we have here? On the Z, we have 312. So I'm going to round that off to 315. And this can be 280. Okay, so we're going to remem remember these um, dimensions. We'll go into my backdrop here, go into my object tab, and I'm going to round this off here to 22000. Sorry. 2200 and I'm going to get rid of that 0.42 and in the height I'm going to round this off to 670. Okay, so we got 2200 and 670. Back into Illustrator and let's click on the Artboard tool and we're going to go 2200 on the width and 670 on the height. <coughs> So let's control zero to uh, zoom out there a bit and center our artboard. And now what we're going to do is we're just going to draw in our backdrop. So I'm just going to go for some random shapes here. And I'm going to keep in mind that my camera is going to be about here for our music video. So we're only going to see this portion of the, um, of the backdrop. So I'm going to keep that in mind when I'm drawing my backdrop in Illustrator. So my center point is going to be here. So okay. So this is my center point, and I know that because I created a rectangle and just said a horizontal line center. So I want to create a triangle. So I'm going to go to my Polygon tool, and I'm just going to click here and set the sides to 3 and hit Enter. Now if I just hold down Shift and Alt and drag that out, it's going to increase the size of that and, and um, keep the aspect ratio. So I want to actually widen this out. I'm holding down Alt, so I'm widening it from each side. And... I'm just going to bring it down. I'm hitting A on my keyboard for direct selection tool, and I'm just dragging these points up using my um, arrow keys on my keyboard. I'm just going to bring that right up to the bottom line there. And I want to make it a little less wide, so I'm going to click on it, hold down Alt, and make that a bit slimmer. Okay. Cool. So I want to duplicate this, hold down control, and then go CF on your keyboard. That's going to duplicate it and put it in the front. And I'm just going to hold down shift and drag this up. And now I'm going to center that, hold down control and shift and press uh, square bracket left on your keyboard. That's going to push that layer to the back. And now I'm just going to change the color of this to be this color here. So it's 64, 157, and 173 on the RGB values. Cool. Okay. So I'm going to repeat that step. I'm going to hold down control, press CF, and I'm going to drag this up to about there. And I'm going to center it. Hold down control, shift. I'm going to press my left square bracket. That's going to place it at the back. And I'm going to choose a different color for this. It's going to be a bit lighter. I actually want to increase the size of that there. Again, I'm holding down shift as I'm dragging. And I'm just going to center align that. A bit too big, actually. Go a bit smaller. Center align it to the artboard again. Now, for my black square here, I'm going to go for a lighter 
So I'm going to eye drop this tool here. <clears throat> eye drop this color. And um, I'm going to go a bit lighter on that one. And I'm going to get... I think that's enough triangles because I could even make all of these a bit smaller because, you know, our guy is going to be standing about here, so you probably won't even see the top of these triangles. I'll just create one more. I'm going to duplicate this one. Can hold it down control, press CF. Just going to drag that up to about here, holding down shift to maintain the aspect ratio, and then I'm going to center align that, hold down control and shift and left square bracket to put that to the back. Okay, so I'm happy enough with that. Get rid of my uh, center marker there. And I want to just create a rectangle. That's going to be the same size as my artboard. And control shift left, <coughs> excuse me, left square bracket. Press I on your keyboard to open your I always forget the name of that eyedropper tool and just make sure that it's the same color as your as your last triangle there so that'll blend in there nicely cool okay so let's do a file export on this we're going to export it as a jpeg and <clears throat> i'm going to create a new folder called sets and i'm going to call this triangles RGB and I'm going to save that out just hit OK on that make sure your resolution set to 300 ppi and click OK now if we jump back into Cinema 4D we can we can apply the image that we just created onto our backdrop so let's double click down here in the materials panel here and create a new material we can call this triangles triangles okay and let's open that up and in the color channel we're going to load in the image that we just created so i have it here inside of sets and this is it say no to that i'm going to apply that to my backdrop uh, object so it's upside down so what we can do is just press R on our keyboard and rotate that around 180 degrees don't forget to hold down shift so that you can rotate in increments of 10 and don't press shift until after you click okay so what have we got we have our guy and our triangles are pretty small so I'm just gonna fix that really quick um, I'm just going to grab my triangles and I'm going to scale those up and I want to center those, maybe go a bit higher. I held down shift to maintain the aspect ratio and I'm going to center those to the artboard. So let's do another export on that and I'm going to overwrite the previous image that I created jump back into Cinema 4D, let's go back into our triangle material and we can just click on this texture arrow here and just go to reload image and that'll reload the image in there. So now our triangles are looking um, a bit taller. So let's do a quick render preview on that. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Now what I want to do next is create some bump. So I want the geometry to kind of jump up or to either jump up or to sink down along the lines of our triangle so we're going to create a bump map and we're going to do that in illustrator jump back into illustrator and let's grab our triangles and let's do a control c on those we're going to create a new layer and just bring this to the bottom and i'm going to hold down shift and control and press v on my keyboard so now we have Sorry now, undo that, I didn't select the layer, Control shift v So now we have two layers, and just in case we want to go back to our triangles. So let's just hide that away, go back to our original layer. And if we select all of these triangles, and hold down Shift and press X on your keyboard, 
Let me get rid of this first. So it's not going to work if you select all of them. You need to select them separately. So select the first triangle, shift X on your keyboard, and it's going to outline it. Do the same for the second one and the third one. So I don't know what this is. We got a rogue triangle there. So just bear with me two seconds. I'm going to do it on this one first. Shift X to outline it. I'm going to do it on this one here. And I'm going to get rid of this rogue. And I'm going to do it on this one here. Okay, so let me just undo that. Okay, so the rogue one is actually... So let me do it. this one first, shift X to outline it, then this one, shift X to outline it, and then this one, shift X. So this is the rogue. Get rid of the rogue. If you have one, you might not. And now we're going to be left with these three outlines. I'm going to select them all, and I'm going to make all of them black. All of the outlines black, and I'm going to set the align stroke to be uh, outside. And I'm going to increase the stroke width here up to about 14 or 15 pixels. So if we we can export this as is, file export as, and make sure to use artboards. That's going to cut away anything that's going outside of the artboard. And let's call this triangles bump. Just hit OK. Make sure your PPI is set to 300. And let's jump back into Cinema 4D, open up our triangles material. And if we select our bump channel and make it active, go into texture and load in the image that we just created. Now, actually, I'm just going to say no on that. And that's going to load that in. But I can see a problem straight away. Let's just render this and see what it looks like. Okay, so the problem I saw doesn't actually exist. I imagined it, so ignore me. Um, so that's given us our bump along the edges of our triangles there. Okay. So I actually wanted our bump to... I wanted to kind of center our bump so that there, one side of the bump is on one side of the line and the other side is on the other side of the line so I'm just going to see if I can fix that I'm just going to turn back on our RGB layer here and as you can see our bump starts here and finishes where our RGB begins so to fix that we need to set this stroke to a line stroke to center and that's going to fix it for us. We're going to get a bit of stroke on the inside of the bottom here, but we can fix that in Cinema 40. So if we just do a file export on that, and make sure to check Use Artboards again, let's overwrite this. Jump back into Cinema 40, and let's go into our bump channel, and reload. Now if we render this out, okay, so it's not working for us. Let's actually load the image all together. Okay, so we have two because when we saved it, it actually added a 0101, so this is the one we're going for. Let's load that in and say no. Okay, so if we render this, now you can see that we have half the bump on one side of the RGB uh, where it changes color and the other half on the other. So I'm going to set the strength here to be minus 60. I'm going to render that again. And now our bump is actually um, it's set to negative. So it's actually cutting into our plane as opposed to forcing our plane to protrude outwards. Okay, so <clears throat> what I want to do next is create a material for my floor. Create a new material, call it floor, and I'm going to set the color of this to be, I'm actually going to leave it at the default. Drag this onto my floor, and let's do a render preview on that. Okay, so we've got to create some lights. So I'm going to create a light object here. I'm going to call it key 
and I'm going to set the shadows here to be area. And I want to set the, in the shadow tab, set the density of the shadows to be 80%. <clears throat> and I want to bring this up along the Y axis and to the left along the X. And I'm actually going to bring it, I'm going to zoom out and bring it up a bit further. So in my coordinates tab in my light, I'm bringing it up to 350 on the Y. And I also want to bring it back along the Z to about 130. Sorry, minus 130 on the Z. Maybe even back a bit further to 160, minus 160. Okay, so now if we do a quick render preview on that. So we need to, so we're getting our nice shadows on the floor. Now we need to fill these dark areas. So we're going to do that with a fill light. So I'm going to just hold down control while hovering over the Z uh, axis here. It's going to drag along and that's going to duplicate the light. That's going to get rid of our darker areas that's being produced by the shadows of this light. So in our key one, we're going to rename that to fill. And we're going to go into our shadow and we're going to turn that off, set it to none. And we're going to go to general and set the intensity to 60%. Now, let's zoom back in. I'm actually going to create a camera to save me having to recenter our character every time. So I'm going to go for, let's see, I'm going to create a camera and make it active. In the coordinates tab, I'm going to zero out the um, heading, pitch, and banking. And I'm going to bring it down along the Y to about... 90 centimeters maybe 92 and I'm gonna leave it is leave it as is on the X and the Z okay so if we render that now so now we're getting our nice shadows and our fill light is kind of lightening up those darker areas so we need one more light I'm gonna make sure that our camera here has a protection tag on it so that we're unable to move it and I'm going to deactivate the camera and I want to create a rim light now so I'm going to grab this fill and I'm going to duplicate it by hovering over this little green triangle thingy and holding down control it's going to drag this to behind our subject so if I middle mouse click and go into my top view it's going to be just behind him there and if I go back into perspective and drag this up so it's slightly higher than our key and our fill. I'm going to rename this light to be rim. And yeah, I'm going to leave it at that. Okay, so let's hop back into our camera, do a render preview on that. Okay, cool. So I want to set up global illumination. Uh, for our scene to brighten it up and to give it a more realistic lighting. Um, so I'm going to create a sky object. And I want to go into my content browser, go to presets, prime, uh, example scenes, go back actually one and go to presets again, light setups, HDRI. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the Photo Studio. So if I just drag this to the Objects tab here, and then I can drag it and leave it over my sky object, that'll apply it there. And go into our render settings, and let's turn on Global Illumination. Okay, so now with Global Illumination turned on, if we do a render preview on that, we're going to get a lot better results with our lighting. So that's looking pretty good. just want to check that his foot is actually touching the floor. So we have to deactivate our camera because it's protected from moving. And I'm going to make sure that this guy is actually touching. Yeah, he is definitely touching the floor. Reactivate my camera 
and I want to turn on ambient occlusion. So let's do a render preview on that. So now we're getting those nice contact shadows here where his foot is. Um, but I'm not liking how high this contact shadow where our backdrops meet in our floor. It's going up very high. So I want to reduce the length of that. So go into your render settings. Go to ambient occlusion. Let's set the maximum array length to be about 10 centimeters. Now let's do another render preview on that. Okay, so that's looking a bit better. I want to put in a skirting board here in the background as well. So I'm just going to create a cube. And I'm going to make it a child of the backdrop so that I can reset the PSR here to align it to our backdrop. If you can't see this button, just hit Shift C in your keyboard. And then you can type in PSR. And then it'll pop up there. Drag it up to your... Um, tool panel there and it'll appear there so I'm just going to click on that now I have two but no harm so I click on that it's going to align our cube to our uh, backdrop it's also going to take the material we have applied to it so let's unchild it and uh, let's drag this orange circle down to make it smaller and let's drag this circle here on the left to make it wider so I want to bring it down here and just kind of get it a bit closer to our backdrop. To about there. And I want to turn on, in the object tab, turn on fillet. I'm going to set the fillet subdivisions to be 3. And I'm going to bring the fillet radius to about two okay so let's see what that's looking like now we just need to create a material for our skirting board let's call it skirting and let's create a new material and call that skirting also and we can go for something that's similar to our backdrop so kind of a bluey green teal color let's apply that to our skirting board and do a render preview on that Okay, so that's looking pretty good. Let's see if we can reduce the jaggedness of our edges here. The, that's being caused by our bump by turning on anti-aliasing. In our render settings, go to anti-aliasing, set the anti-aliasing to best, and we're going to go 1 by 1, 4 by 4. Let's do another render preview on that. Okay, so I'm happy enough with how that's looking. Um, let's do a play and see what this is looking like right now. Okay, so that's looking pretty good. This guy's rocking out to this wicked sound. Now, what you can do is you can basically go to back to Mixamo and you can find different dances and you can go into Illustrator and create different backdrops and then you can go into After Effects and you can make a cool composition made up of several dances, several backdrops and several, um, yeah, several dancers, several backdrops all with this one song playing in the background. And this song is about six minutes long, so you'll be at that for quite some time. Um, you'll be able to mix it up with loads of different materials. So for example, you could have this guy in one scene and he'd be dancing away. And then you could set up another scene and you could create a different material for this guy. So you could turn on transparency, go for glass, and you could apply that material, overwrite the existing one on your character's geometry. And if you render that out, you have a completely new character. Um, you just have to change the backdrop. And that's easily done inside of Illustrator. So the possibilities are endless. 
and if you guys would like to see me continue on with this video and create some more characters and some more backdrops just let me know in the comments below um, and I'd be pleased to oblige but uh, I'm gonna leave it at that for now guys hope you learned a lot just one final thing that I forgot to mention guys is that um, if you play this out um, your frame range is only going to go as far as 500 frames I think it is so if you want to increase that you're going to want to increase it here so we can set it to let's say 2000 frames and drag that out now our dancer will dance but he's going to stop at 500 so we want to loop that animation so to do that hit shift f3 in your keyboard and let's select our Mixamo Mixamo rig one hips and over here in your properties you're going to be able to set the after here to repeat and set the repetitions to 50 that should be enough to loop over and over until the end of the the end of the 2000 frame range anyway so if I just close that down and now if I bring it back past 500 and hit play now our guy's going to dance around on a loop so uh, just wanted to get that in there at the end okay guys thanks again for watching Blood. With blood, persuading.